So it's a great pleasure to uh, uh, have Vladimir Sverik from uh, University of Minnesota, who will speak on the Louisville theorems for the Navier-Stokes equation. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am uh, I am really delighted to to speak on uh, this occasion. I have been a big uh, admirer of uh, Nikolai's work, and uh, I have learned. Uh, a lot from him, so, so it's a honor to speak uh, in this special uh, seminar for his uh, birthday. Happy birthday, Nikolai. Um, so I will talk about uh, some uh, uh, things which, uh, which we started uh, to talk about with uh, Nikolai when he um, when he was in uh, Minneapolis, I, I think it was in, I think it was in 1998. I'm not I'm not completely sure, but I think it was uh, around the time. And uh, at, at that time, uh, Nikolai and uh, Francois Amel uh, came up with uh, 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 new solutions of the KPP equation, which is, uh, which is here. And uh, so we know there are solutions which look like uh, ODEs, uh, then there are traveling waves, uh, but uh, they were able to construct uh, uh, interesting new solutions essentially by uh, gluing together uh, uh, different uh, traveling waves and uh, these ODE solutions. And uh, I th they constructed, uh, I think it was a five uh, dimensional or maybe four dimensional, I don't remember exactly, manifold of uh, these uh, solutions. And uh, when uh, Nikolai was here in Minneapolis, uh, we were asking, are these uh, all solutions? At, uh, at the time, it looked like a plausible question. Do, are these solutions uh, constructed uh, by Nikolai and Francois Amel, consisting of uh, these uh, glued traveling waves from both sides? Are there all solutions? So we didn't know at the time, and later it was solved by Nikolai and Francois Amel. Uh, but it was a good question to consider. And uh, we also asked about Navier-Stokes. What happens uh, in this uh, context for Navier-Stokes solutions? Can we do uh, traveling waves or other uh, entire solutions for the Navier-Stokes equation? And uh, because Navier-Stokes uh, was uh, difficult, we uh, started with uh, the burgers. Okay, so we thought, okay, let's take a look at uh, Berger's equation. And uh, uh, there you also have uh, traveling waves. So this has been known with various velocities. And uh, we were interested in other bounded entire solutions. And in this case, it's, uh, it's quite easy. We, you, uh, you recall the Kohlhopf transformation that you can uh, write down the solutions of uh, the Burgers equation in uh, in this uh, in this form. Let me try my laser pointer here, and uh, you 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 can uh, write the solutions uh, in uh, this form. And uh, from that, it's it's not hard to see that you have many many solutions, uh, uh, entire solutions. In fact, uh, infinite dimensional manifold, if you ask that uh, these are bounded, then uh, you, you, you take all uh, measures which are compactly supported and construct solutions of the heat equation with this formula here. And uh, uh, when you use Kohlhoff transformation, you get uh, an infinite uh, dimensional uh, set of, uh, of uh, entire solutions. So we didn't uh, write anything on, on this, uh, but uh, Later, Carlos Koenig and Frank Merrill, they, uh, they had a much deeper analysis of uh, the problem where they uh, characterized uh, traveling waves by, uh, by uh, uh, noticing some additional uh, properties. And so you can, among all this big family of solutions, you can characterize the traveling waves. 
So for us, it was interesting to see that, uh, that in this simple scenario, you have uh, many, many uh, entire solutions uh, of uh, this equation. So then uh, what happens to Navier-Stokes? So we started in, uh, in 2D. Eventually, uh, what uh, many things which I'm uh, going to mention appeared in, in a paper in uh, 2007 with uh, some important uh, contributions from uh, from Gregory Surigin and uh, Gabriel Koch, but the the first idea was uh, the the following. So we have let's let's uh, look at the question if they are traveling waves, say for two D Navier Stokes, and uh, by a change of variables, just using Galilean uh, invariance. In uh, 2D, it's, it's not hard to see that uh, a traveling wave, you can change it to a steady state solution just by, uh, just by looking, uh, just by using the coordinates uh, connected to, to, to the traveling wave. So we have a steady state solution. And the question is, is what can we say about it in uh, two dimension? So the, the, in, in two dimension, we have, uh, a very nice structure, we can go to uh, the vorticity equation. So we look at the vorticity, uh, curl of U, the uh, vorticity equation is uh, here. And uh, of course, if this term is not there, if the drift term U uh, grad U is not there, one knows that uh, such a solution is uh, constant by the classical Liouville theorem. And and the first natural question one can ask, maybe the, the Liouville theorem can be generalized to this level. If we have, uh, if we have uh, an equation like this, say this time I, I will think of, of B just a divergence bounded divergence free vector field. Uh, does it imply if we have a situation like that, can we say that, that omega is constant? So if B is not uh, divergence free, then it's easy to construct uh, counterexamples. But uh, one has counterexamples even when B is divergence free, uh, free. A typical example looks like this in this, uh, in this uh, picture here. So the field is uh, constant in these, uh, in these uh, quadrants here. So it goes from infinity here to uh, to, sorry about this. It goes from infinity here towards the origin, uh, from the north, from the south also, and then it goes away like that. So this is, you can make this transition, uh, you can make this transition uh, along the diagonal smooth. And uh, this is a counterexample of, uh, to, to the Liouville theorem uh, at the linear level in this context. So we somehow need to to use that u and omega are uh, related. And uh, here, is, uh, here is an uh, outline of uh, the proof, which uh, uh, was mainly uh, Nikolai's uh, idea. Very simple, very beautiful. Uh, so we have this uh, scalar uh, equation and uh, we look by by using uh, by using uh, the Navier-Stokes regularity theory, if uh, u is bounded, you can show that omega is bounded, and you control all derivatives and so on. So you have full control of the uh, regularity properties. So in particular, omega is bounded. And uh, so let's take the the maximum of omega, and then uh, from the uh, from the strong maximum principle or Harnack inequality or uh, any of any version uh, of this, one can see that if you are at points where the solution is close to the maximum, it's almost, uh, it's say M minus delta, then it will be also almost equal to the maximum in a large ball. So more precisely, if you give me epsilon, for, I, mean, I mean, if I'm given R, and then for any epsilon, I can find the delta such that if uh, the value of the solution here, sorry about this, uh, at the center is 
bigger than m minus delta, then in the ball of radius r is bigger than m minus epsilon. Okay, so we take that and uh, now we integrate over the ball of radius r. So when we integrate uh, omega, then uh, omega is almost equal to r, so we get uh, the area of the ball times m. So in particular, it grows at, as r squared. On the other hand, if we integrate omega as uh, written as curl, so we have integral of omega is equal to, to this expression, then it uh, goes to the integral over the boundary. On the boundary, u is bounded. So this will be bounded by some constant uh, times, uh, the, uh, times the radius. So the first power of r. And then for sufficiently uh, big r, we get a contradiction unless uh, m is equal to 0. So that, uh, that uh, gives us uh, the statement that any bounded uh, solution in the plane uh, has to vanish. Now, this proof uh, can be upgraded to, to time-dependent uh, setting, where we look at the time-dependent uh, bounded solution. There, there are some uh, technical issues uh, uh, there, because the, the solution, bounded solution, so this depending on the exact uh, definition, if you only insist that u is bounded, they may not be constant because we have, uh, we have these uh, examples here uh, where u is constant in space but changing in time. So these are solutions which uh, essentially appear when you push the fluid uh, from uh, infinity. So one needs to take these solutions uh, into account. But again, with some, uh, and, and they also slightly complicate the regularity uh, issues, which one has to deal with. But nevertheless, uh, more, more or less using uh, the same idea uh, of Nikolai, uh, one can show that, uh, that if u is a bounded solution, so, uh, solution of the time-dependent uh, equation, for example, in the sense that if we test by uh, divergence-free function, we get uh, the, the right equation, like, uh, uh, like sorry about this, uh, a little problem here, like here. Uh, that's the weak form of uh, the equation. Then, uh, then one can conclude uh, that any such uh, solution is uh, one of these solutions. So any uh, bounded solution of uh, Navier-Stokes on minus infinity times uh, some uh, time interval uh, on minus infinity t, uh, t times R2 uh, or so-called ancient solution is uh, as so, uh, one of these uh, solutions. And in particular, if we if we impose uh, some additional condition, all such uh, solutions are constant. And uh, in particular, there are no uh, traveling waves in, uh, for Navier-Stokes in uh, uh, two dimensions. So I, sh I should mention that, uh, that Nikolai also proved some other beautiful uh, theorems uh, related to uh, fluid flows of uh, Liouville type. Uh, one of them is uh, the following, which he proved with uh, Francois uh, Amel, that if uh, we consider this time Euler steady state, so we consider Euler steady state uh, solution in the whole space in uh, R2, sorry, two, two dimensional. And uh, we assume that uh, we assume that uh, the solution has uh, no uh, critical points uh, also at infinity, so we can uh, we can say that uh, uh, the velocity is bounded both from above and below by a non-zero constant. Then uh, we can conclude that u is uh, a classical shear flow like this. So so this is in fact much a much harder uh, statement than uh, than uh, the the Navier-Stokes uh, result, which I uh, which I mentioned. Then uh, there is another uh, 
a very interesting result concerning uh, Beltrami's flow, that if we have a Beltrami flow in uh, two dimensions, so uh, Beltrami flows are characterized by this equation that uh, that curl of u is uh, a multiple of uh, u, and if it has decay, if it decays faster than uh, one over x, then u is uh, identically zero. So that's another uh, Liouville type uh, theorem uh, proved uh, by Nicole. So um, in uh, for going back to uh, Navier Stokes. In uh, three dimensions, uh, there uh, have been only a partial result uh, so far concerning the question uh, which we originally asked about, uh, about uh, traveling waves. But uh, one has other types of uh, Liouville theorems which are uh, related to the regularity problem. And I'd like to uh, I'd like to mention uh, some of them. So, the the idea of uh, studying uh, singularities uh, using uh, kind of a blow up procedure and uh, and Liouville type theorem has of course been used in uh, in many for many PDEs probably uh, originated in uh, minimal surfaces. So there. The idea is that if you have uh, if you have a minimal surface in R n, assume say that zero uh, belongs to the minimal surface, then you can then you can look at uh, these uh, magnified uh, surfaces. Let's call them sigma lambda. You take lambda to infinity, and uh, in the limit you get another minimal surface, which even though say the original surface was local, this one is now defined uh, globally. And uh, in the case of uh, minimal surfaces, it has uh, many nice uh, properties because we control, uh, we, we have uh, the monotonicity formula uh, and that uh, enables us to to show that uh, say this uh, blow up uh, surface is a is a cone for example we can attempt to do something uh, similar for uh, for navier stokes so we we rescale at the singularity there is a scaling symmetry of uh, the navier stokes given by uh, given by this uh, uh, given by this uh, formula here and uh, we can try to see what happens if we get some limit uh, in uh, this uh, rescaling. Of course, the situation is uh, much uh, less certain than in the minimal surfaces because we don't have a monotonicity formula. So in general, we cannot say much about uh, this, uh, uh, the convergence of these, uh, of these uh, blow ups uh, here. But nevertheless, there are some can cases where uh, we can say something. So, uh, one of them, the, the special one of the special cases where we can uh, say something is if u is uh, bounded in L three uniformly uh, on each time level. Okay. where we, people want to assume that you have a bound in the in this is uh, this is uh, can be thought of as some kind of endpoint critical space and uh, the question is if a bound in this endpoint critical space gives you regularity so in this case this uh, procedure uh, works quite well and we can uh, we can use uh, the uh, Liouville type uh, theorem in this case because what happens in this scenario if you if you perform this uh, blow up procedure, you get, uh, because of this control that uh, U is in L infinity L3, you get a very nice uh, solution after the blow up procedure, which uh, has uh, the property that it vanishes after the positive time. So it, uh, the singularity stays. So that's the first uh, thing which one has to show that if you do the blow up procedure, you had a singularity uh, originally, it will stay there. And moreover, in this case, after the singularity, the solution will become zero. 
So where does that come from? That comes from the fact that if you look at uh, this scaling property, you, you scale for t is equal to zero. So you essentially are just uh, rescaling the, the L3 function in this manner. Think of t is equal to zero. And then if you do it, it uh, it's easy to see that, uh, that uh, when you rescale it like this, the function goes to zero. So the rescaled BOA profile is zero. And then after that, the solution is zero. So you have, uh, you have uh, a version of the Liouville theorem. You have an entire solution of uh, the Navier space theorem, which uh, this time is not a smooth solution, but uh, it's uh, in the class of the so-called suitable weak solution. But it still has many nice uh, properties. And uh, 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 then I'm getting some feedback. Which I also try to come down. And uh, uh, potentially has uh, singularities, but they are, and everything is under control, including the singularity. And you know that, uh, that the solution is, uh, you know that the solution uh, uh, vanishes after positive time. In that case, you can show that the solution is identically zero. So the singularity was not there and you have uh, regularity. So the, the proof of uh, the fact that uh, of, of the Liouville theorem, if you interpret it in this way, is uh, based on uh, on a backward uniqueness result for the heat equation uh, by Luis Escariaza, uh, um, uh, Gregory Sergin, and uh, myself, which uh, which is uh, it's ultimately it's a result about the linear equation. So you have a linear equation like this. Uh, uh, here and uh, you have it in uh, in uh, the uh, half space, but uh, you have you uh, you know that uh, omega is bounded. Okay, so so let's assume that omega is bounded, and uh, but you don't have any control over the boundary of the uh, of uh, the half space. So it can be any bounded function on the boundary of the half space, one can still show that uh, the solution is, uh, is zero. That's, uh, that's in, in this case, it comes from uh, the, the nature of uh, the domain. Essentially, the, the, if you think about it in terms of the control theory, so you have this, uh, uh, the, the half space, and you can think about the boundary condition as control. Okay? I have something to start with in the domain, and I'm, uh, uh, and the question is if I can set up the boundary condition so that it will drive the solution to zero. So in a bounded domain, the answer is positive. Yes, you can drive the solution to zero. So this statement would not be true in a, in a bounded domain, uh, but in an unbounded domain due to infinite speed of propagation, so, so of uh, roughly speaking, the, the solution, they just propagate towards infinity and uh, the control has no chance of uh, catching up uh, with them. So if, if you look at that way, uh, that's uh, one way to see that there is a chance uh, to, to have uh, a theorem like this. But there are still interesting problems uh, related to this uh, question, even for the heat equation. So let's, uh, let, let, me mention, uh, let me mention one of them. Let's uh, consider uh, just a pure heat equation uh, in, a, in a cone. So the, the cone has uh, opening, uh, an opening uh, uh, alpha here. And uh, so it's an, uh, it's an infinite domain. And uh, in the beginning, it, one can ask the same question. If I have a solution uh, which is uh, bounded, uh, and vanishes at some point, at some uh, point t, does uh, the solution have to vanish? Okay, so again, this, the same kind of uh, backward uniqueness uh, question. And, uh, uh, and again, the, the point is that, uh, that we don't have any uh, control uh, at, the, at the boundary other than assuming that the solution is bounded. And if you if you think in terms of this control problem, 
one might be tempted to say that in, uh, in this case, uh, it's still the same situation, that uh, there will be parts of the domain where the solution has no chance of catching up with, uh, where the control has no chance of uh, catching up uh, with the solution. So originally, uh, we thought that for, uh, for any cone like that, the, uh, the backward uniqueness uh, should, uh, should be true. But then uh, Luis Escariaza found a counterexample uh, when the angle is uh, less than uh, 90 degrees. Then uh, with my student uh, Luli, we were able to show that you can go beyond uh, half space to a domain which is smaller than uh, half space to something like uh, 107 uh, degrees or something like that. And then uh, the, the best result so far is by Ankana Reland, who, uh, who proved that for 95 degrees, I think she has uh, something like 94.8 degrees, you still have uh, the result, uh, the backward uniqueness. And the conjecture is that the borderline case is 90 degrees. So the statement should be true for angle bigger than 90 degrees. And uh, we have a counterexample for less for 90 degrees, but uh, this is still uh, this is still open. Um, there is a there, there is a interesting uh, thing which uh, which uh, comes up uh, with this uh, uh, with this backward uniqueness uh, stuff, kind of uh, an uh, uh, an uh, intriguing uh, possibility. Uh, about uh, Lerehoff uh, solutions. So Lerehoff solution, uh, or maybe I should say uh, the suitable Lerehoff solution is uh, in, in three dimensions, so we are in three dimensions, is currently the, the best uh, solution we can uh, construct for Navier-Stokes solution. So you start with uh, L2 function, use um, energy estimates and uh, local energy inequality and so on. And, and uh, uh, one is able to show that there are global solution. And then uh, with the work of Schaeffer and Kaffer, Oleko, Nierenberg, one is able to prove partial regularity. So the solutions are, are regular on a, on a large set. Um, but we cannot uh, rule out uh, singularities. Um, and the, the, the problem is that the singularities may disrupt uniqueness. That's the, the main issue. Otherwise, maybe one could say that singularity is, is not such a, uh, such a big deal, but uh, since it, uh, since it uh, we potentially can disrupt uniqueness, so if you disrupt uniqueness, then of course the equation loses its uh, predictive power and uh, and the model, uh, one can say, would be in, inadequate. So let's assume that something like uh, that happens, that uh, you lose uh, uh, uniqueness. Uh, but uh, it appears, uh, based on this uh, backward uniqueness result, uh, and, and that may be a statement uh, which, uh, which might be within the realm of what is possible to prove with, uh, with current uh, technology, is that one might be able to prove backward uniqueness for, uh, for a LARA solution. So for a general, say, suitable weak solution of LARA, it's quite conceivable then one, that one has backward uniqueness. That, uh, so, so in reality, what one to, to, for the equation to have a predictive power, one would like to have forward uniqueness, right? That you predict the future uniquely. But with this backward uniqueness uh, stuff, what is quite uh, conceivable, that uh, you can, even in the class of Lerae Hopf uh, suitable weak solution, that you can maybe uh, predict the past uniquely in the sense that if you know that at some point two solutions uh, coincide, you don't know maybe uh, modulo singularities that they will always coincide in the future, but uh, the conjecture is that you know that they, they uh, had to coincide uh, in the past. And so th this may be within the realm of uh, what is possible and can be proved for some uh, for some uh, uh, model equations. 
for example, for the complex uh, Ginsburg-Landau equation, I will I will talk uh, more about it uh, later, which shares some uh, which shares some properties with uh, Navier's folks. Uh, it appears modulo some uh, computer simulations of spectra and so on. Uh, it appears that one has exactly this uh, scenario that uh, that one has weak solution. You can have singularities where you lose uniqueness in at the singularity, but at the same time you do have for these weak solutions you have uh, backward uh, uniqueness. So that's uh, that's kind of an intriguing uh, uh, thing, which which uh, might be true. Uh, in connection with this uh, backward uniqueness result. I should say that uh, that uh, this idea of backward uniqueness was also used uh, in, in a beautiful work of uh, uh, Lu Wang on geometric flow. So, so you, can, you can use it, um, say in, in the mean curvature flow, you, 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 look, you can look at self-similar singularities and uh, at the, at the uh, boa point, they become a cone. And uh, the surprising thing, also using this backward uniqueness uh, result, is again the backward uniqueness that if you know the ball up cone, th there is only one way you can you can arrive to it. So 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 you, uh, you it's exactly this type of result that uh, that you can predict uh, backwards, but you don't have uh, you, uh, and in the mean curvature flow, you definitely don't have uniqueness uh, when you go forward. Now, so, so this was uh, this uh, blow up scenario, which I was uh, mentioning that, uh, that you have, uh, that you have uh, zero after the blow up time that comes from the, uh, from the information that you were in a, in a borderline critical space. You can uh, you can consider a slightly different situation where you where you don't have uh, such an information, but you still nevertheless assume that you get some limit, uh, some nice limit, as you do this BOA procedure. Again, we have far too little information to uh, to get that in general, uh, but it's interesting to consider the situation where we assume we simply, let's simply assume we have that. So when you, when you do it, and it's interesting to look at both regions where T is positive and where T is negative. Okay, so we, we blow up, uh, we do the blow up procedure at uh, the singularity. And uh, if, uh, if you assume some nice convergence, this time um, maybe not necessarily to zero, but let's say to a suitable weak solution, then the the solution by partial regularity because we know that uh, we know that uh, the the singularity set is one dimensional uh, is less than okay the one dimensional measure has to be zero then you obtain a solution where you will have only one singularity like this and if you assume that this limit exists as lambda goes to zero you don't have to choose subsequence then it has to look like that. The solution itself has to be scale invariant and it would have to look like that. So for here in the region T uh, negative, it would uh, be this formula here and for positive T's uh, here, it would be this formula here. And for these functions capital U and capital V, you get uh, again, a kind of Liouville type uh, theorem. So you have uh, an function, which is a vector field, which is defined globally. And you ask if uh, there is a global solution to this equation that's for in the region of negative times. Sorry about this. And uh, in the region of positive times, you have uh, this equation. So it turns out that uh, in uh, in uh, for for this equation for negative times uh, you have no solution the best proof of that is due to typing uh, psi many years ago and uh, in the positive region on the other hand you have many solution which is uh, which is to be expected because we can take minus one uh, homogeneous functions as initial data so in, if you if you look at it in uh, this way, you can 
you one way to one way to think about it is that you can embed the original Liouville theorem, which we were discussing with uh, Nikolai back uh, many years ago in uh, in uh, three dimensions. You can uh, you can embed it into into this uh, family of equation where you. Uh, where you look uh, at uh, this equation with a parameter kappa. And so for kappa positive, it turns out by the, the very nice proof of type and psi that there are no solutions. I, I will very quickly mention the, 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 the main idea, which again is to use some leverage which you, which you get from scalar equation. The, Essentially, all these results, uh, or at least one should say many, many results uh, uh, for Navier-Stokes ca come from the fact that you discover some interesting quantity in the equation with, which satisfies some scalar equation, and then you apply the, the maximum principle, Harnack inequality, or something like that, and, and uh, you, you can uh, get uh, uh, interesting uh, conclusions. So, in this case, for kappa positive, we so, so, so one, it, it turns out that uh, there is a nice quantity for for this equation, which is uh, which is here. So uh, it's uh, modulus of u squared divided by two plus pressure plus kappa times x times u, and that this quantity satisfies the following. Uh, equation. So there is a scalar operator here, uh, Laplace, then a drift term, and uh, then the right-hand side is, uh, is negative. So that's, uh, that's the information that, uh, that uh, you, you control the sign and, and then you can use various things about super solutions, sub solutions, and so on. And it turns out that when, uh, when kappa is positive, when kappa is positive, then this term here enables you to construct a very useful set of super solutions. Okay, it, it really is working. This, this guy here is working very much in your favor because if you think, think of uh, this term pi, if you substitute say e to epsilon x squared or something like that, some fast growing exponential, this uh, this uh, term here on it will be positive, okay, because kappa is positive, and uh, if you take uh, derivative of e to x squared, it will uh, it will be positive. That's uh, this is the, the the main idea of type and psi, and it turns out if you do this calculation, this term will dominate uh, uh, the situation. And you can use these uh, super solutions uh, which you have to control the situation. So that's what, what you have in, uh, for kappa is equal to zero. For kappa less than zero, of course, you still have this, but uh, then uh, the, the super solutions have the wrong sign, so to speak, they decay at infinity, so they are not very useful. And indeed, we have many, many solutions in, uh, in that case. Of the, and, uh, and the classical Liouville situation is exactly the borderline case when uh, when kappa is equal to zero. So that's exactly when this term stop uh, stops being uh, very useful, and we are just left. We still have this very nice quantity, which uh, with kappa is equal to zero, which satisfies these things. But so far, people have uh, not been able to to leverage it, but. Uh, I think uh, probably if uh, there will be, a, I would be surprised if a proof of uh, the Liouville theorem in three dimension, if it can be proved, if it did not use uh, this, uh, this quantity. Now, uh, the, let's, uh, let's very briefly uh, talk about uh, the region for, uh, for positive times. So, so uh, I was mentioning, so far, uh, looking at, uh, at uh, negative times, which you get after the ball up as you approach the singularity. So there, the, the uh, putative singularity, of course. So at this simplest model, it can be uh, ruled out. But uh, for, the, for this equation, which you get for the positive time, one can show that there are many solutions. And in fact, 
more solutions than uh, one would like to have in some sense that uh, that uh, the situation is uh, is uh, roughly speaking this if you if you take say minus one homogeneous initial uh, initial data as an initial condition here and you uh, and you try to uh, to construct a, a solution of uh, of uh, this type uh, with uh, this initial conditions one gets uh, one gets this uh, uh, nice equation uh, here and one would like to solve it with uh, this one can think about it as a boundary condition uh, that uh, at infinity the solution behaves like a given minus one homogeneous uh, solution here plus uh, something of lower order so this is uh, this is very similar to the classical situation when we solve the, the Navier-Stokes equation, the steady state Navier-Stokes equation in a, a bounded uh, domain with a given boundary condition. And from the classical theory, we expect that as G becomes large and uh, we go to, to large data, then we will have uh, solutions and uh, we will in fact have more than one solution. We have various bifurcations uh, and so on. And so, uh, the same, uh, the same uh, is expected to happen for, uh, for this uh, equation, which, uh, which is here for forward self-similar solution. And a large part of it uh, can, can indeed uh, be proved uh, that uh, one has uh, module again, some calculations uh, of spectra for which one has to use uh, computer one can show that there is uh, non-uniqueness uh, then uh, uh, and uh, that uh, if you start with the minus one homogeneous data even let's say locally minus one homogeneous data one can lose uh, uniqueness so let me uh, let me mention this uh, this model which i which i uh, had in mind uh, which I already mentioned, the complex uh, Ginsburg-Landau uh, solutions uh, equation, the complex Ginsburg-Landau equation, where many of uh, these uh, uh, things can be analyzed uh, in more detail than uh, what we are able to say for uh, Navier-Stokes Navier equation so far. So it's an equation for, uh, for a complex valued function. So we have a function uh, on R3 times some time interval into the complex uh, numbers. And uh, it's like this. It's if you set epsilon is equal to zero, it is a, a nonlinear focusing, uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And uh, you see you have I in front of the time derivative and you have I in front of this epsilon. So these two terms, they uh, essentially are like the heat equation. So this epsilon adds uh, dissipation to, uh, to the uh, equation. And uh, you can show the, the same, uh, uh, you can show the same uh, energy uh, identity as, uh, as for Navier-Stokes, exactly the same. And, uh, equation also has uh, the same uh, scaling uh, symmetry as uh, the Navier-Stokes uh, equation. And uh, one, so this equation has been used, uh, it's, it's known from uh, physics, but uh, in the context of uh, modeling uh, issues uh, as around Navier-Stokes uh, regularity. It was introduced uh, by uh, uh, Peter Constantine, uh, Charlie Daring, and Dave uh, Levermore and, uh, and other authors who, who proved uh, essentially the uh, Larrea theory of uh, weak solutions. And then one can also prove uh, partial regularity, uh, essentially kind of reproduce uh, the the results uh, we had for for Navier Stokes, so the set of uh, possible singularities has uh, uh, one dimensional Hausdorff measure zero, and so on. And uh, 
since uh, since uh, one has a lot of knowledge about potential singularities uh, of uh, the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, uh, one can uh, one can use it to to draw some conclusions about uh, singularities uh, uh, singularities uh, for for this equation. So um, what what happens is uh, that. Uh, when you do the BOA procedure, one can, one can again go and uh, do this uh, BOA procedure and everything. So if one does the naive BOA procedure, assuming that everything will converge uh, as in minimal surfaces, that you, th that you get a nice cone and uh, uh, one will have a purely self-similar singularity, then, then uh, that's very unlikely. I mean, if with some effort, one can probably rule that out, that it is not possible. However, one can get a slightly more general singularity, which one might call a modulated uh, singularity, something which is, uh, which is known uh, from, uh, from uh, the theory of Schrodinger equation. And it also appears in some other, uh, other situations. And that looks like that, that uh, as, you, as you approach uh, the, the singularity, the solution looks almost like a self-similar singularity, but there is this extra, there is this extra modulation here, uh, which you can, uh, you can think about in the following terms, that uh, when uh, we, so the, this equation has these scaling symmetries, and you can zoom in on the symmetry just using the, just using the uh, scaling symmetry, but you can also combine it with uh, the extra symmetries which you have in uh, for the equation. In this case, it's uh, something which might call gauge symmetry. You multiply u by a complex uh, unity, then this is still uh, still a solution of the equation. So you can combine these two symmetries, the scaling and the and uh, this, uh, this gauge uh, symmetry here, and zoom in on singularities using that. And if you do that, you get this type of uh, singularity, which uh, again, it appears modulo some uh, uh, calculations of the spectrum and so on, that this is a real possibility that there, uh, there is a, a, this modulated uh, singularity like that then you can either go to a modulated forward self-similar singularity like that, but you can also lose uniqueness here. And uh, for example, you can lose uniqueness to some extra additional uh, secondary modulation. There, there, there's more than one way of uh, losing uniqueness. But uh, at the same time, you have backward uniqueness. So that's uh, the uh, scenario which I was uh, discussing uh, before, that you cannot prove uh, forward uniqueness, but you may have, uh, you, in this case, you can prove uh, backward uniqueness. So a similar effect for, for Navier-Stokes equation is the, is, uh, the following, that uh, one could uh, also, uh, uh, Combine for, for Navier-Stokes, as you approach the singularity, you, you kind of zoom in on uh, what is going on. You, can, you have this uh, scaling symmetry, which we have been uh, using uh, so far. But of course, for Navier-Stokes, there are also rotational symmetries. So you can try to combine the rotational symmetry with the, the scaling symmetry. And uh, in, a, in a similar way, like you have for complex uh, ginsburg landau and the formula which you which you get from that is uh, the following the following formula where a is an, an anti-symmetric uh, uh, anti-symmetric matrix so this would be a modulated uh, singularity which you can have potentially or one can uh, look at and if you write uh, the equation for that it's the one which i which i wrote here now you, you try to rule that out by using, trying to find a maximum principle as uh, before, using uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, scalar quantity, which hopefully uh, uh, you will be able to find some super solutions and so on to, to rule out uh, the solution. But so far it's open. 
this uh, the solution of uh, this equation so far people have not been able to to rule out uh, that this uh, has uh, non trivial solution so the Liouville theorem for this uh, equation uh, if you like it in those terms is uh, is open and uh, one can uh, the the ideas which uh, which were used in uh, in the paper with uh, Nikolai and uh, Gregory uh, Surigin and Gabriel Koch can be used to uh, rule these singularities which I was just mentioning and also in, in fact a more general class of uh, singularities the so-called type one singularities where you have some explicit uh, uh, bounds on the on the ball operate for for example you assume that uh, l infinity norm of u is uh, bounded by this expression which is exactly what you have in the self similar blow up or even in this modulated uh, self similar blow up uh, so you can uh, assume this or uh, one can assume that uh, one has uh, this bound, which is also what you have in this uh, self similar blow up and also in some uh, in some other uh, natural situation. So in these cases, you can uh, still prove the liberal theorem. If you have a if you have an ancient solution of uh, of uh, the Navier Stokes equation, then uh, uh, then you can show that uh, they are constant, and if you put it together with in in the in I should say in the axisymmetric class, so so uh, uh, they uh, the the uh, the simplest possible uh, singularity scenario is in the axisymmetric case, which cannot be ruled out. So uh, if you if you uh, use uh, these ideas uh, uh, in uh, uh, concerning uh, Liouville theorems, uh, which started with this uh, observation by Nikolai by looking at uh, this uh, scalar uh, quantity in two dimensions. You can uh, rule out these uh, type one uh, singularities for uh, axisymmetric uh, solution. So uh, that's. Uh, that's uh, more or less uh, uh, what we know at uh, at the moment. But for example, the the original question: if you have uh, traveling traveling waves in uh, in uh, three dimensions, or say if you change coordinates, bounded solutions in uh, three dimensions, which are non-trivial, is uh, still open. So I think I uh, that's all I want to say. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. So questions or comments? So let me ask uh, 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 a couple of questions. So, uh, so first of all, so your results were uh, mostly about R3. So what about other dimensions? Are there Higher, higher dimensions. So higher dimensions is, uh, uh, I think the, for example, the, the Liouville theorem for self-similar solutions, the, the one when you rule out uh, self-similar solution, the, the proof of uh, Taita and Tsai, uh, in my, I, I think that one generalizes to, to higher dimensions, uh, but uh, in, in general, the, the work in higher dimensions is, is more difficult because, so three dimensions is good in the sense that, uh, that the uh, control on the energy flux, that the energy flux is controlled by energy estimates. Okay, that's, uh, that's an important feature in uh, in three dimensions and in fact it's controlled by the energy estimates with some epsilon to spare so to speak okay in four dimensions you just control it by critical uh, embeddings which uh, and you lose compactness so that's already a major source of uh, trouble and in higher dimensions 
it's uh, it's much more difficult. So so I think in general the the regularity of uh, in uh, in higher dimensions is uh, many questions are open. Thank you. And um, I have one more question. Uh, so you had uh, this very curious uh, example of uh, for the heat equation with the corner. Uh, so I, I'm wondering um, uh, if you could give an idea. So why 90 degrees uh, is the, the critical, uh, the critical value? Um. It's related to uh, it's uh, it's related to uh, fragment Lindelof. Uh, or, or how is it? There, there is in, in complex analysis. There is a theorem if you uh, about uh, growth of uh, holomorphic function in in an angle. Right? You can if you have a holomorphic function in an uh, in a cone, uh, then there is a critical growth uh, which is related to the opening of the cone, so to speak. Uh, and uh, for 90 degrees, I think you, you can get something like uh, z squared, e to z squared or something like that, okay? A function like that. So uh, that's, uh, that's essentially uh, uh, that's uh, that's the relation. It's it's related to to the question what what growth do you need of a harmonic function so that it is zero in in a cone? Okay. So for uh, for a, a quarter space, I think it's e to x squared, maybe with some constants. Okay, and. Uh, then this function e to x squared comes up when you construct this counterexample because it's a natural function in connection with the heat equation. Mm -hmm. That I don't. Uh, it's it, it it's a very clever construction by by Luis Escariaza um, uh, of this function. But I think it's 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 related to this question. If uh, if you have a harmonic function in an angle. What is exactly the optimal uh, growth under which you can prove the Liouville theorem? And uh, then the natural function for the heat equation is e to x squared, and this is related to, to the first quadrant. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so, other questions or comments? Oh, may I ask a question? Yeah, Colin, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so first of all, let me just think it was a very nice talk. Uh, I wonder of, um, uh, for the scalar equation, uh, there's often uh, a counterpart to Liouville theorem, so called removal singularity theorem. Uh, that is to say, if the solution is defined in the complement of a point, then it can be extended smoothly to this point. Is something of this uh, kind true for Navier Stokes? Equations. Uh, so assume that you have a bounded solution of Navier-Stokes equation, which is defined uh, in the complement of a single point. Uh, Removable singularity. Uh, uh, something known of this kind. It's a it's a very good uh, question. I can tell you what I know, okay, but uh, I have to say it's not much, okay. It's uh, okay. so so in. Uh, the, the simplest scenario you can uh, consider is in 3D. Uh, so let's consider 3D steady state, okay? Just, yes. just to make life uh, simple. 3D steady state, and you, you assume that you have, uh, you have uh, a steady state solution away from one point. Yeah. Then you can... Uh, you can ask uh, and, and say, say you have some uh, you have some decay okay you have some control okay probably in general if you have absolutely no control then you can construct something okay but let's say you assume that uh, that the solution is bounded by one over x okay by one over this so 
I cannot rule that out. The only thing which I can rule out, if in addition you assume that the solution is minus one homogeneous, or at least asymptotically minus one homogeneous, then I can rule that out. Then uh, you can, uh, you can uh, the singularity is uh, removable, but the proof is kind of more difficult than one would think, at least the one I know. Okay, it's, uh, it's essentially, you, you have to characterize, it's, it's in some sense, it's the wrong proof. You, you have to characterize the, the, the way it goes, you characterize all minus one homogeneous solutions. So you buy explicit formulas, more or less, and then you check that none of them satisfies the Navier-Stokes equation. <laughs> That's how the, so you, you identify the family of all possible candidates and then you show that none of them satisfies the equation. So there is also a question on, on chat from uh, Kojo Rafael Madu. Do we have results on Liouville type theorems for the steady compressible Navier-Stokes equations in two dimensions? Not that I know of. I, I mean, the, the compressible case is, um, it, it's, uh, it's uh, different. And I, I have to say, I have not uh, looked at it. So it's conceivable that, that one, could, one could be able to, to prove something maybe, but uh, I have not seen uh, any, any result. But uh, it doesn't mean that they may be, that there may be something which is doable there. Okay, so if there are no further questions, so let's thank Vladimir again for a wonderful talk.